Hey guys, and the race has begun. OpenAI has started the full training of GPT. I've scoured all possible sources to bring reliable information about what this means. Let's start with two tweets that were the first hint that large-scale GPT-5 is being trained, coming from OpenAI president and co-founder Greg Brookman. For context, OpenAI usually trains smaller models about a thousand times smaller before conducting full training. They then analyze these smaller models before moving on to full training. This is the basis of OpenAI's work. In Brookman's words, the idea is to predict and scientifically understand the resulting systems. With that said, what they are building now is a maximization of all available computational resources. They are bringing all their ideas together and scaling them up in an unprecedented way. In other words, they're training their biggest model yet. We'll be discussing parameters, data, and capabilities soon. But first, let's jump to another tweet that was posted by Jason Way, one of OpenAI's main investigators, a couple hours after Brookman's twist. He mentioned that there's nothing quite like the thrill of launching a massive GPU training, which has sparked a lot of positive feedback from other OpenAI staff. This doesn't mean that GPT-5 will be ready immediately. It took around three months to train GPT-4, which was then followed by security tests. I'll wrap up this video with my precise prediction of when I think GPT-5 will be released. But first, there's more proof that GPT-5 is currently under training. Before delving in further, a quick note. Do subscribe to the channel and like the video. This greatly aids and keeps you in the loop. I'm here every day discussing these topics and keeping you updated. Your likes and subscriptions help this project grow immensely. And the larger it gets, the more cool videos I can bring to you. Deal? Thank you for your subscription and your like. OpenAI has updated their blog to inform you that registration for the red testnet has closed. This means that testers are now ready to begin security testing of the new model. You might wonder what's the point of these testers being ready if the training is still going to take two to three months. Well, before a model is fully trained, it goes through several checkpoints that can be likened to save points in a game. OpenAI knows that GPT-5 is going to be good, but how good? And how big? And what are these new or old ideas that they're going to incorporate? One thing seems almost certain. They will implement a way to allow GPT-5 to think longer. In other words, it will organize its reasoning steps prior to solving a challenge and have each one. Of these steps of reasoning verified internally or externally, Sam Altman, when he was in Davos, talked about what it means to verify or understand what's going on. And it seems like it's going to be a little different than what people currently think. He said it's not possible to peer into someone's brain and analyze the hundred trillion synapses to understand what's happening in each of them and fully comprehend why the person thinks what they think. We're not a black box for each other, but what we can do is ask someone to explain their reasoning. We might ask, why do you think that? And the person can explain first this, then that, then I arrive at this conclusion and so on. And we can judge if that seems reasonable to us or not. And it seems like our artificial intelligence systems will also be capable of doing something similar. They will be able to explain to us in natural language the steps from A to B, and we will be able to decide if these steps seem valid to us. A few days before this conversation, Sam Altman told Bill Gates that it could involve asking GPT-4 or GPT-5 the same question about 10,000 times. If we think about the next two years, what will be the main milestones? Multimodality will definitely be important. Input and output of voice, image, and eventually videos. This is something that people really want. When they released picture and audio features, the response was much stronger than they expected. 
you will be able to go much further into that but perhaps the most important areas of progress are in reasoning ability currently gpt4 can only reason in extremely limited ways in addition reliability is a crucial aspect if you ask gpt4 the same question about 10,000 times chances are one of those answers will be pretty good but the system doesn't always know which is the best According to Altman, the ideal would be to get the best answer every 10,000 times. This increase in confidence will be important. Just imagine if we can get these systems to explain their logic step by step and in a way that makes sense to us. This would not only increase our confidence in the answers provided, but it would also allow us to better understand how these models are coming to their conclusions. This is key not only to validating the accuracy of the answers, but also to making sure that the AI's thought processes align with our logical and safety principles. The progress in multimodality mentioned by Sam Altman is also an area of excitement. The ability to process and generate not only text, but also speech, images and video opens up a range of possibilities for AI applications in a variety of fields from education to entertainment and beyond. In the end, what we're seeing is only the tip of the iceberg in terms of what these advanced AI models will be capable of in the future. As we continue to develop and enhance these technologies, we're approaching an era where AI will be more than just a tool for specific tasks but a collaborative partner that can contribute meaningfully in a wide range of fields that begs the question how much larger will GPT-5 be capable of all these parallel thoughts according to Gavin Hubert CEO and co-founder of XChat AI, he estimated that GPT-5 would have about 10 times more parameters than GPT. According to leaked information, GPT-4 has between 1.5 trillion and 1.8 trillion parameters. But what did he mean by that? This is expected to come from a combination of a larger embedding dimension, more layers, and twice the number of experts. The embedding dimension refers to the granularity of the training in relation to each token and its context. A larger dimension means more details and nuance about each token. Doubling the number of layers allows the model to develop deeper pattern recognition, identifying complex patterns within patterns. Speaking of modalities, the first thing they want to improve in GPT-5 is the real-time nature of voice interaction. At the moment, there is a certain delay from the beginning of speech to the response. In other words, it takes a while to respond. Sam Altman mentioned that there are a lot of current issues that people complain about, such as the voice being slow and not being in real time, but he believes that will improve this year. He believes that the future of using computers will be to talk to them almost as if the operating system was a chat experience. Take note that he mentioned about video and audio input and output. They want as much text, image, audio, and video data as they can obtain. They also want what I am going to refer to as reasoning data. Data that represents human intent. Think about it. How would you make a model be able to handle more complex challenges? If GPT-5 takes in a lot of data about people crafting plans filled with human intentions, it could learn to imitate such schemes and plans and may possibly have an internal or external verifier evaluating these reason steps. Now is the time for me to finally give my prediction on when GPT-5 will be launched. I believe it will be towards the end of November 2024. First, let me clarify that I don't think they're going to unleash all of GPT-5's capabilities all at once. They should release different functionalities as we move into 2025. But what explains the delay from now until November? Well, first of all, as mentioned, it takes a few months to train a model the size of GPT. Now for the key point. 
Sam Altman has bragged several times in the past about how they tested GPT-4 for six to eight months before releasing it. It would be rather odd for OpenAI to have even fewer security tests for GPT. So why late November instead of late September? I think OpenAI will want to avoid the timing of an incredibly controversial US election. If they release even an alpha version of GPT-5 with video and audio before this election, they could face incredible criticism. Entering this minefield would be very risky. We've already seen robotic calls mimicking U.S. President Joe Biden. I have to say that no one really knows, not even OpenAI, what GPT-5 will look like. As Sam Altman recently said, until we train this model, the new version of the language model, GPT-5, is like a fun guessing game for us. Every time you think you know something, you scale it up 10 times and realize you knew nothing. Got any ideas? Any questions or thoughts? Leave it in the comments. I'd love to chat about the subject of the video. If you like the video, give it a like, share it, and subscribe to stay on top of the news. Now showing up here at the top, a few suggested videos that might make sense for you to watch. See you in the next video. See you later.